Hey, good morning, Woodlawn family. How are y'all doing this morning? I hope that you are all doing well. It's uh, nice to see you tuning in today. Let's uh, let's see who's with us here bright and early this morning. Uh, let's see, we have Marty and Kathy James. So nice to see you guys today. I hope you are doing well and uh, things are going well for you. There is John Johnson, how are you, man? I hope uh, you are doing well. I uh, hope, John, you got on your motorcycle this weekend. It was awesome weather. Uh, Courtney James, hey, Courtney, good to have you with us today. There's Julie Young, a friend from Fremont. Uh, good to see all of you today. I uh, want to thank you all for tuning in um, as we dive into things. There's Ellen Rowe and Diana Nutter. Uh, good, to, good to see you guys on with us this morning. Um, as we uh, kick things off here this morning, uh, I don't know about you, but how about the weekend? How many of you guys enjoyed this past weekend? Man, service on the lawn number three. Uh, I don't know about you, but I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like God just smiled on us this weekend. <laughs> I just feel like God just gave us a hug this weekend. It was it was awesome, you know. Uh, as we were uh, looking at the weather early last week, I mean, the weather wasn't even looking good. There was, a, there was a strong chance of rain on Sunday. And then sure enough, by the end of the week, man, God just opened the windows of heaven. The sun was shining. I mean, it was like absolutely perfect. I'm seeing hearts flying all over the place on the screen. But it was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, the sun was shining. It was warm, but there was a nice breeze that kept everything cool. Uh, just all the people that came. I was overwhelming all the people that were in the service. It was just an incredible, incredible weekend. And the food trucks, uh, they were able to keep up with all the, you know, we were a little worried when we saw the crowd. We we're like, man, I hope these food trucks can keep up with all of this. And they just did an awesome job. In fact, I'm looking for some comments this morning out of um, all the different food trucks that were there. We had the, the, had the beach bum, which was the beach food. We had the mojo barbecue. Uh, we had the Mexican food truck. We had Kona ice, a little sweet there for you. What was your favorite? Uh, what did you eat? What was your favorite? Um, I actually got a chance to eat a couple of things. I, I ate these um, shrimp tacos, man, from the beach bum truck. They were awesome. And then I got this brisket sandwich from Mojo's. It was incredible. I tried getting to Kona ice and I was too late talking, talking with everybody. I missed Kona Ice, man. I was I was so sad. But anyways, <laughs> nevertheless, um, it was a great weekend, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And real quick, before we dive into things today, we are getting ready to go into our phase two of our reopening this weekend. We are thrilled about that. Um, so our kids' ministries are going to be open now at all three services. So it was so nice to see so many of our our young families back this past weekend, and we're hoping that y'all be back this weekend if you're if you're feeling ready to come back to church. Uh, kids ministries will be open. In fact, you probably got a mailing of some changes that are going to be taking place as we go into phase two. But uh, we're looking forward to seeing people uh, back in with us. And uh, as I shared in the message this weekend, uh, we're in our margin series, and I know that's been speaking to a lot of people. And in this past weekend's message, we had a little fun as I opened up, and I was talking about some habits. In fact, there was a doctor by the no name of Dr. Duhigg uh, who wrote a book about habits, and he coined a phrase or a term called keystone habits. And he basically said, you know, we all have different habits in our life. You know, we think oftentimes think of habits being bad, but actually we can have a lot of really good habits in our lives. And he actually said there's some significant habits that actually naturally create other good habits. And he identified those as keystone habits. For example, he said exercise. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all know, I need to get back to the gym. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I am determined to start exercising again. He, he said that the, the habit of exercise leads to other good, naturally leads to other good habits. Like if you exercise regularly, chances are you are going to eat better which means even in eating better and exercising, it's going to allow you to have more a habit of more patience with people around you, and you're going to be more productive at work. I mean, all those good habits come from the one good habit, what, of just simply exercising. And this is the one, and I didn't do this this morning because Christy was still sleeping in our bed, but uh, if you make your bed every morning, he said that leads to a better sense of overall well-being. 
Uh, you're going to be more satisfied in your work. Check this out. And you're going to be better at budgeting. Who would have thought? Make your bed budget better. <laughs> it's just how it works. And uh, the other one that I thought was really important was family dinners. You know, our lives are so busy. But they talk about, you know, when a, when a family can come together on a regular basis and eat dinner together, the benefits for our kids that, that literally it leads them to uh, better habits with doing their homework, better grades, better emotional control, and more confidence. That all comes from what? The simple habit, habit of coming together and eating meals together. So what we find is that habits can create a lot of really good habits, these keystone habits. So what I want to do over the course of the next couple of weeks in our morning devotional, midweek devotional, is I want to talk to you about habits, some small habits that you and I can put into our lives that will create big change. You know, oftentimes we want big change in our life and we think it's big things that create the big change. But actually, it's oftentimes the small things that are done on a regular basis that bring the greatest spiritual significance and greatest life change in our lives. And so that's what we need to remember. It's oftentimes the small things, the things that no one sees that we're doing on an ongoing basis that brings the greatest change in our life. So if you're tuned in today and you'd like to see some change in your life, you're like, you know, I'd, I'd like to see my relationship with God go to another level. Maybe you have some struggles in some areas of your life, maybe emotionally, I get some emotional struggles. I want to get through those. Maybe you have a bad habit in your life, you know, just something you've wrestled with, you haven't been able to quite get a hold of. Maybe you'd like to see some relationships, your, your relationship with your spouse or your family go to another level. Maybe it's your health. You're saying, you know what, I, I just am not as healthy as I want to be. I believe God has better for me. Uh, maybe it's financially. You're like, I just want to see myself financially get into a better place. Well, if you're in any of those areas or any area of your life, you want to see some change, I want to share with you some, some habits that we can get going that will bring lasting change into our life. And today, what I want to talk to you about, one of the foremost important habits that you and I can have is simply seeking God first. You know, so oftentimes we get it backwards. You know, we're seeking our dreams. We're seeking our goals. We want to see change happen in an area of our life. So we just get busy. We roll up our shirt sleeves and we just get busy making that change. And oftentimes we leave one of the most important parts of it out. We forget putting God first in that area and seeking him first in those areas. In fact, I want to read a scripture to you actually found in the Old Testament, uh, a portion of scripture in the book of Zechariah. Um, Zechariah chapter four, if you have your Bibles, you might want to go there with me today. Um, or if you have your Bible app or whatever, this is what God said, um, in the book of Zechariah chapter four, verses six through 10, this is what the Bible said. It says, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. I love this, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And I love verse 10. For who has despised the day of small beginnings? Who has despised the day of small beginnings? It's these day, the, the, the small things. It's in the, the, the small areas. Well, you know, maybe you're like thinking, I, mean, I need some big life change. And you're starting off and it's maybe not the big things. Maybe it's just the small things. In fact, um, you know, I love sports. And I was sharing with you, I'm excited about the football season cranking up, the Big Ten cranking up. And I was reading a story years ago about John Wooden. Actually, he, is a, he was the basketball coach for a couple decades of UCLA, and and he actually led um, UCLA to ten national championships in his career, which is phenomenal uh, in basketball. And what was interesting when I was reading about his life, what he would do uh, the very first practice at the beginning of the season, he would spend a significant amount of time in the locker room with the players, helping them with their socks and shoes, <laughs> believe it or not. He would spend like a big part of the first practice making sure the guys had the right socks, making sure they had the right shoes, but making sure they were lacing everything and tying everything right. 
And, and literally somebody interviewed him and said, why do you do that? He simply said this. He said, it's the little things that are vital. I quote, uh, little things make a di big difference. He, he said, if, if I get these guys to get, the, get in the right fit of shoes and the right socks, it'll, it'll keep them from getting blisters. It'll give us setbacks and it'll help them to perform better. Who would have thought it, it, was, it was starting with the shoes? And, and oftentimes in life, it's the little things in our lives that make the biggest difference. In fact, you know, when we look at this particular story, uh, we can learn some things from this story. And, you know, sometimes when you and I are trying to make life change, you know, you'd like to see some areas of your life change. Um, oftentimes, discouragement is, is one of the biggest enemies. And as we look at our story here, let me just give you a little brief overview. Um, many of you may know, back in the Old Testament, God always warned his people. He said, listen, if you don't get your lives right with me, I'm going to let the Babylonians come in and they're going to wipe out the temple and they're going to take you captive for 70 years. And of course, that is, that's exactly what happened. They, they weren't honoring God and God allowed the Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians to come in and, and to really uh, wipe out the temple, destroy the temple, took the people captive for 70 years. But the beautiful thing about God is God had a plan to restore them. And God used the Persian king Cyrus, who actually some people believe was reading the prophecies about himself in the book of Isaiah. But nevertheless, he actually uh, was allowed the people of, uh, of Israel to go back and rebuild the temple. And so there was a, the leader, was his name was Zerubbabel. And he led a group of people back to rebuild this temple. And it was a, it was a big job. And so they got back there and they laid the foundation. And the foundation of this new temple wasn't quite as big as the old one. And as soon as they started building it, they had opposition. And they got discouraged. And in the midst of their discouragement, because it was such a big project, the people doubted it could ever be done. And so what did they do? They just quit. They just gave up for, for 18 years. They just threw up their hands and like, you know, we're not, we're not going to be able to, this is too big of a project. We're, we're not going to be able to do this. And so what happened is they just got distracted and they just went out about their own lives and they began building their own houses and, and seeking their own lives first before putting God first. And, you know, sometimes we're often the same way. You know, we, we step out and we, we try to see some life change happen in our lives and we get discouraged. Maybe you're living for God. You're trying to do everything right. And things aren't happening the way you think. You get discouraged and you just kind of go off and, you know, you start just chasing your own dreams and goals and kind of doing it on your own. And, and here's what God did, though. God said, all right, it's, it's time to bring some change here. And here's what we need to realize, that all lasting life change, if you don't like an area of your life today, if you want to see more in your life, it all begins with God. And so um, Zechariah starts out in chapter 1, verse 3. He says, Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, declares the Lord, that I may return to you, says the Lord of hosts. So God said, Listen, you guys have it all wrong. I still have a plan. But the problem is you're seeking all of these other things first. You're, you're living your lives. You haven't put the, the, the temple first. You haven't put my work first. You're, you're seeking your own dreams and goals and you're not satisfied. You're out there doing all of these things. You're not seeing the fruit. You're not seeing the blessing. You're chasing all of these other things first. And so God says this, listen, return to me. He said, come and put me first. If you put me first, you'll see me do some amazing things. And here's the thing. If you and I are going to walk in God's best, if we're going to see the life change, if we're going to live the life God called us to live, it all starts with God because it's by his spirit, by his power. I love what he went on to say later in, in uh, chapter four. He says, then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you great mountain before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace. How many of you know God is a big God? And God said, I don't care how big this mountain is. I don't care how big of a life change you need. I don't, it doesn't really matter what size miracle you need. What does the Bible say? Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know, our power is just not enough, right? In our own strength, we can never accomplish God's perfect will for our life. But what does the Bible say? Not by power, not by might, but by God's spirit. God said, what are you, this great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, I'm going to wipe that thing flat. Do you believe that God can do anything today? Do you believe that God is a God of miracles? Um, I, I don't know about you, but there is no area of your life or my life that is too great. No mountain that could ever be in your way that's too great. Uh, it could be a spiritual thing you're struggling with. It could be a, a, a relational problem, a health problem. Maybe you're having a major crisis in your finances or at work. 
Can I tell you what? There is no mountain that is too great for God to knock flat. And that's what God was saying. He was saying to Zerubbabel and all the people, he's like, you're all discouraged. You don't think you're going to be able to finish this, but let me tell you what. It's not by your power. It's by my power. When God's blessing comes into your life, all impossibilities vanish. God is able to do, I used to always say this and I believe this. How many of you know God can do more in five minutes in your life, in your relationship, in your marriage, in your business, in your health, in your finances? God can do more in five minutes than we could do in five years. Isn't that, isn't that cool? And that's good news, right? That God can do anything. So don't give up hope if you're discouraged today that God can bring change into your life. So what's the, what's the takeaway today for you and I? Here's the takeaway. That big life change comes by putting God first, seeking him first. I love what Jesus said. He said this in Matthew 6, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. So what was Jesus saying? He's like, you're all out there trying to chase your dreams. You're chasing your goals. You're, you got all these things that you're doing and there's nothing wrong with those things. It's the order. You're seeking those things before you're seeking me, God says. And Jesus said, listen, don't seek those things first. Don't seek the blessing first. Don't seek the life change first. Seek me first. Jesus said, listen, if you put me first, all these other things will be added unto you. So what does that mean for you and I? It means in all the pursuits of our life, and it's good to have dreams and goals and pursuits and aspirations. Many of those are God-given. But an order is important, always putting God first. Jesus said, seek me first. And what? All these things, all these dreams, all these goals, all these breakthroughs you want to see in your life, it all happens by what? Putting God first. Because when you put God's first, first, God first, what happens? He releases his spirit's power in your life. And suddenly things begin to happen in your life that you could never do on your own. Business uh, connections come supernaturally. I mean, it's, it's just amazing what happens. God changes the heart of your spouse. God draws your children back. I mean, it's amazing what God can do in your life and mine when we just simply take the time to put them first. So practically, what does that look like? Let me just say, um, how, how do you practically put God first? Well, first of all, it really starts with surrendering your life to God, saying, God, you are number one. But it starts by, listen, the first part of your day. Give God the first part of every day. I think that's a great way to live your life. You know what? I love what David said. He said, early will I seek you. So I'm going to give a golf clap to all of you today. We have a good crowd watching today. I want to you know, give a, a little golf clap to all of you that are starting your day where? Right here in God's word. You know, there's something special about seeking God first. Like give God the first part of your day. Um, you know, I, I love when you just get into the word in the morning, get that cup of coffee and open up the Bible and just let God's word speak to you. But don't just let it speak to you, surrender to it. Say, you know what, Lord, whatever your word says, I'm going to live it. And let the word of God, God really minister to you. Pray first. You know, I have a to-do list and what I do in my life every day before I start my day, I get my to-do list out. I have a to-do list for the week and I have a to-do list for my day. And you know what I do? I pray over that. I start off my day by saying, I pray over every item. Lord, help me with these things. Lord, go before me in these things. Lord, orchestrate things I could never do in my, myself today. Align the resources. Speak to the hearts of the people. I mean, I always do that at the beginning of my day. I pray over my to-do list. So I don't know what you have going today. I don't know what, what's on your to-do list today, but I would challenge you today. Before you get up and start your day, pray over that to-do list. And just say, God, I give it all to you. Secondly, is I believe we should give God the first part of our week. I talked about that this weekend. The, the first part of our week, the first day of our week is Sunday, right? It's uh, in the Old Testament, it was Saturday, it was the Sabbath. In the New Testament, it's like the Lord's Day, which is Sunday. Saturday, Sunday doesn't really matter. But what I mean by that is make church a priority. The first part of your week, start it in church, gathering together with your spiritual family. I want to tell you what, there's things that happen, things that happen in church that just just can't happen other places. When you get with your spiritual family, you're encouraged. You come together in the presence of God. You worship. You hear the word. It's like that. Remember what I said? It's that keystone habit that helps you to keep all your other spiritual habits going on throughout the week. If you come to church every week, chances are you're going to do your devotions more often. Chances are you're going to live out your faith. Chances are you're going to treat your spouse better. Chances are you're going to be more productive in your work life by putting God first. And then the last thing I would say is this is, Give God the first part of your finances. Um, we call that, you know, giving God the tithe. Throughout the Bible, that's also known as first fruits giving. 
Just saying, you know what, God, you're first. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you first in my day. I'm going to put you first and, and let, let your word soak into my life. I'm going to give you the first part of my week. I'm going to worship with my church family. And you know what? I'm even going to give you the first part of my finances. That God, I'm going to trust you. I believe that everything I have came from you. And I'm going to give you the first part of it first. And trust that if I do that, number one, I'm honoring you and thanking you. But then again, I'm also going to believe that you'll bless the rest. And there's just something about putting God first, seeking him first. So I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know how big of a mountain you might be facing. But what did, the, what did the God say? Not by power, not by might, but what? By God's spirit. God can change anything in your life like that. God can bring breakthrough. God can bring miracles. And what's our job? Our job is to make the simple habit of putting God first. Seek him first. Let him have first place in your life. Seek him in the first part of your day. Make church a priority at the first part of your week. Give God the first and best of your finances. I tr I, trust me, as you do that, as you put God first, he said, listen, you're out there, you're stressed, you're worried about all these things. What did Jesus say? Just put me first. You don't have to worry anymore. I'll take care of everything else. That's pretty simple, huh? Just put him first. Well, I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. Let me, let me bless you today. Let me pray for all of you this morning. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for this time together today. Lord, we thank you for the incredible weekend you gave us and the way you blessed our weekend. And Father, I pray for each and every person that's tuned in today, Lord, that you would bless them. Help all of us every day to put you first before all the other things that we seek in this life. Help us to seek you first. Help us to give you the first part of our day the first part of our week, even the first part of our finances. You promised us, Jesus, that if we would seek you first, we wouldn't have to worry. Worry and anxiety would go and that, Lord, you would do what we could never do. You would supply all of those needs. I pray today that as each and every one of these folks that are watching does this, that you would begin to take worry and anxiety out of their life and that they would begin to see you do in their life what they could never do on their own. I pray you bless them today in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, I want to thank you for being with us. The next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about some really important things. These little keystone habits that create big results in our lives. Well, I love you. And it was so good seeing all of you this weekend, uh, this past weekend. And I really look forward to seeing you this weekend. If you're ready to come back, our kids ministries are open. We hope to see you in one of our three weekend services. I love you. Have a great day.